Hi, everybody. This week, we're going to be learning about our final family, our final immigrant family, the Confino family. The Confino family was immigrants from what was called Castoria at the time, modern day Greece. And they immigrated from there to America at the start of World War I. We're going to be looking at a picture of the Confino family. After that, we're going to be watching a short video from the Tenement Museum to get a better sense of what life was like in 1916 in the United States. We're going to be also learning two new academic vocabulary words this week, the words ancestor and the word descendant. It may be very helpful for teachers to return to our word knowledge, word knowledge building matrix in order to dive deeper into these two very important academic vocabulary words. For the word ancestor, you might explain the word as relating to our past relatives, while descendants relate to our future relatives. Examples of our past relatives may include grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, while our future relatives may include children, grandchildren, or great-grandchildren. It is also helpful to possibly look at the roots of these words so students can start building these deciphering skills on their own. Ancestors has the word ante in the beginning. Ansi or ante means before, means it came before us. While the word descendant has the word descend, meaning move down. Our descendants are below us on a family tree. Following the video clip, students are going to share two ways that life was different in 1916 and to try to write a complete sentence about what life was like in the early 1900s. Students will then read a short text. Um, there's an audio clip provi provided. There's an audio clip provided here um, in case either students don't want to read or students are working on their own independently or it could be used in addition following a class reading or as a model of the reading for students. Um, it's up to the teacher's discretion depending on the needs of the students, uh, whether it's best to play the recording first or to have students read independently first or to read it as a class. Um, here's the text. As you can see, the texts are getting slightly, slightly longer as we're, moving, um, as we're moving ahead and pushing our students to build and improve their reading skills. Um, again, there's a number of very interesting discussion questions that may be helpful to use a wraparound strategy, a circle discussion group where students can prepare responses and then when it's their turn, they can present their response to the rest of the class. Um, students could draw connections and make predictions about what life was like for this family as we continue to learn more about this family throughout the rest of the week. Uh, an interesting activity that students may enjoy is a biography poem, where after learning about Victoria Confino, they can uh, analyze her character through the use of a biography poem. Even more interesting may be for students to take that same concept as a follow-up and to create their own biography poem about themselves. Students love sharing information about themselves, and this might be an excellent way uh, to engage students in writing, as well as making connections between themselves and the text. Uh, finally, there is a number of closing strategies that the teacher could choose determining, on, determining based on the needs of uh, his or her students. Um, the biography poem is an excellent way to conclude the lesson, as well as, again, having students make connections, um, whether members of Victoria's family remind them of members of their own family, uh, or other similarities and differences between their childhood and the childhood of Victoria in the story. So now let's begin the lesson. Can somebody please read today's essential question? Good, we have a new essential question. How are personal experiences shaped by surroundings? Good, how does our environment influence us? We learned about conditions 
How do our conditions shape our identity? Can somebody please read the first lesson objective? Good. To interpret words and phrases as they are used in a text. Today's text has a number of important vocabulary words for students. Can somebody please read the second lesson objective? Good, to determine and summarize key ideas and details in a text. Let's look at this image of the Confino family. What do you see? What do you think? What do you wonder? You might say, in the image, I see a family. You might say, in the image, I see a mother, a father, and four children. You might say, I think that it is an old picture. You might say, I think that they are immigrants. You might say, one thing I wonder is why is this family important? You might say, one thing I wonder is if people used to smile in pictures. You can open up this short video clip by following this link, and you could pause my video now. Following the video clip, um, students should share two ways that life was different in 1916, as well as try to write a complete sentence for what life was like in the early 1900s. It may be helpful to model this on a Google Doc um, for students. What was life like in New York City in 1916? Some of the things mentioned in the video. There's no television or video games. Nickelodeon movie theaters were very popular. There's cars and many horses. Woodrow Wilson is president of the United States. World War I is happening. 23 million people immigrated to America between 1890 and 1924. Now you can decide how you would prefer to jump into the text, whether you prefer to read it first or to listen to a recording first. Um, it's important that students hear the text twice due to many of the vocabulary words and there's guiding questions in the text there's guiding questions included in the text that students could respond to, possibly on a Google Doc, and then numerous discussion questions that students can reflect on after. Um, I think students will really enjoy this text and the rest of the lessons for this week. Thank you very much.